talk to everybody. I uh, probably always talk to everybody in this room at some point in time about you know how we're going to handle adversity. Okay. We've also talked about see all the time. Everybody's got a story. Everybody's got a story. Okay. But the real challenge is is be able to, to get in that bubble, guys. That bubble coach used to talk about when you were in high school. Okay. That you can shut everything else out. You can shut everything else out, and you can focus on what we have to do. This is the last chance for the Spartans to get ready for the Big Ten season that begins next week here against Ohio State. It's Thomas in front of Le'Veon in the straight eye. Hand off to Le'Veon, up the gut, touchdown MSU! Coming off his 20-3 loss to Notre Dame, Michigan State looks to get back on track against Eastern Michigan in the final tune-up before Big Ten Conference play opens next weekend. So to uh, recap Notre Dame, and I look forward to uh, Eastern Michigan on Saturday, head coach Mark D'Antonio. Uh, I guess just uh, post-game, the Notre Dame game, sort of stand by some of the things we talked about on uh, Saturday evening. But uh, first of all, I think uh, nobody asks more questions or is more disappointed than the players and the coaches. And you know we're constantly going around um, asking ourselves if we do the right thing, what can we do to change change the outcome of that game? But um, at this point, you need to move on and move to the next to the next challenge, which is Eastern Michigan. I said all along the game would be about growth, and we need to take something from that game. And you can, oftentimes can take as much from a loss as you can from a win. So that's what we will attempt to do. What we will do. As I've said before, in other respect, we're seasoned, and we just need to. Uh, you know, just need to play, continue to play forward, and we'll be all right. Over here. Our skilled players are young. You know, when you look at uh, Benny Fowler right now, you know he's he's got more snaps in three games than he had in his entire th three years that he's been here previous. Uh, so he's really a still a first-year player, and he's doing he's doing a great job. But he's our most experienced of the players. The rest of them are are younger players that are are sort of finding their way through it through the smoke, and that's what. When I look back at the first question, I s and say, well, we should have went back to a little bit more conventional offense because in a two-minute situation, you're working your wide receivers. But I thought we could spread it out and, you know, open it up a little bit, which the first time it worked, but, you know. But our wide receivers are talented. They're very talented, but it's a different skill set when you go into a stadium on a marquee game. Hey, we're, you know, as I was reminded on my way over here by Tim Allen, you know, we're playing with the big boys. This is the big boy league that we're playing in. And, you know, there are good football players and there are very good coaches and there are very good schematics on both sides of everything that's going on. And so to get, be put in that stadium at, in a media type situation like that, national TV game, um, things on the line, you know, you're, gonna, you're not going to succeed all the time uh, as a young player and you have to grow. And so we'll have to go through some of those growing pains with that. But I think we have a lot of talent at that position, and it will show itself before the season's over. That talent will show itself. Uh, when, you, when you don't win and when you feel like in a close game, which even the score says 23 was a close game, you know, it hinged on a couple plays um, until the fourth quarter. But in a close game, you're always looking at that one or two or three or four plays that could have made the difference and got you back in the game and swung the momentum. Do I feel like I let Spartan Nation down? I do everything I can every single day for them, for them and for our players, and our players do as well. So um, in the end, you look at yourself in the mirror and say, did I do everything I could do? The answer is yes, I live with it, I move on. Um, I don't deal with that, that aspect of the, of the job. Just try and get better and try and evaluate, critique what we do and try and keep it all relative to life in general and move forward. From the first day on the job, head coach Mark D'Antonio has pledged to support student athletes as they pursue excellence, both in the classroom and on the playing field. Right now I'm studying community governance and advocacy. It's uh, pretty much how 
business, private, both private and public uh, organizations affect the community and how uh, planning in those areas can, can definitely uh, help the community out. I'm a pre-med major. Um, my major is actually human biology, but pre-professional uh, course. Um, currently a uh, fifth year senior, finishing up about five credits I have to take. Um, currently in the process of applying to medical school. Well, I'm an engineering student. Uh, my major is applied engineering sciences, and uh, what that is, it's real similar to industrial engineering. Um, we just call it a different name here, but uh, a lot of engineering classes, a lot of business thrown in there, so uh, instead of specializing in one area, we kind of have a, a wide range of knowledge. I mean, we play at an elite program, so I mean, you can definitely get distracted by the outside things socially or even uh, even the games. I mean, we have a lot of big games, a lot of national te televised games and things like that, so you wouldn't put your preparation into your schoolwork like you do your athletics, so Coach D always emphasizes that we put our, our emphasis on our, our schoolwork. It's a whole new challenge when you get into um, college sports, especially football, where really, you know, the season really never ends and you constantly have stuff, constantly have stuff to do, but, you know, at Michigan State, um, we have a great academic uh, support staff, um, you know, Mandy Chandler and um, Todd Edwards and Jim Pignatero, and they set you up with tutors and, you know, get you all the help you really need. Definitely, they'll definitely load you up with tutors if you need it, especially if they see that you're slacking in a certain area or you need help in a certain area, they'll definitely give you mentors or tutors or both, so just keep you on track. Oh, they're great. I wouldn't be where I am today without them. Uh, between Mandy, uh, Todd, and uh, Jim Pignatero, they've just always been there. Uh, normally think that the, the students struggling uh, would be in their office uh, more than anyone else, but uh, I think I spend more time there than anybody else. So, uh, you know, they've been great for me. The, uh, the facilities are great. The people are great. And uh, without them, I wouldn't be here. You know, we have Mondays off every week, and that's a time where you really need to kind of buckle down and say, you know, I need to get ahead in my classes this week. You know, I need to make sure that any extra time that I have, you know, I need to buckle down for a good, you know, solid couple hours and really get ahead so that during the week on Tuesdays and Wednesdays, when we're really going hard in practice and those days are, those days are longer, that I don't have to worry as much about my class because I know that I need to get things done, you know, both on the field and off. Just being able to balance everything. Um, you know, obviously football takes up a lot of time. So as long as your priorities are straight and you can uh, you know, just kind of keep your head on straight and. Uh, know when you have to buckle down, when you can have some fun, uh, then it works. Coach D is a, is a student first uh, type of guy. Um, if you're slacking in school, you won't play on, on, on Saturdays and I mean period, and that's, that's what he emphasizes. And I mean, it takes a great man to emphasize that because we have a lot of great players on our team, but he wants uh, us to come out of here a great man first. Yeah, Coach D is uh, one of our biggest supporters uh, academically. And uh, I knew that before I even came here. That, that was a big uh, factor in my decision to, to be a Spartan. And uh, you know, whether it's being late for meetings, having to leave practice early, uh, you know, school comes first with Coach D and uh, he really likes to graduate his players and uh, that's definitely uh, a big emphasis with him. This week marks Celebrate 2012 with the Varsity Letter Jacket presentation and Hall of Fame induction ceremony. The sixth member Hall of Fame class of 2012 included two football All-Americans, Carl Banks, one of the top linebackers in Spartan history, and Clinton Jones, an explosive running back from MSU's back-to-back -back national championship teams in the mid-1960s. For the Spartans, honoring the past builds pride for the future. Yeah, so we are Duffy Doherty's Spartans at that time. Now you have Mark D'Antonio, that he's taking these young student athletes, these football players, and he's teaching them values. I like Mark. Mark is bringing something that, you know, back that we had in the 65, 66 team. He's bringing that value back and teaching these guys characters. These guys are getting their degrees, you know, they're like, they're gentlemen. Tradition is very important. You know, we can never forget our past, you know. You know, the, the tradition is the foundation to build, to build for the future. So this is a, it's a, a beautiful experience for me to be having me have this honor at this time for Michigan State if I really come back. So this is Mark D'Antonio Spartans of the 21st century. You know, we, are, we, we had a, a magnificent team in the last century. You know, that sounds funny, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> now here we are in the 21st century. This is, uh, I mean, it's great. We should have so much you know, pride, you know. And we can't, you know, we can't be too judgmental about these young people. We have to support these young athletes regardless of what sport 
regardless of whether the ups and downs. But the foundation was set in high school by the mentoring that I got. But people that really cherished my life and helped direct me to go in the direction that they thought was better for me than the choices that I made. And then going to Michigan State, and across the foundation that I had in high school, academically and also in sports, and then having the same mentoring, Bert Smith, Jack Bresman, Wayne Fox, you know, Danny Borcher, Hank Buller. I mean, I mean, we're surrounded by people who are mentoring us, keeping us on track, you know, but you have people that have wisdom and have experience trying to direct you. And that's the same thing that we're trying to do, that we're doing actually with, uh, with the young people in all the sports, you know, here at Michigan State. And of course, naturally, I'm going to be part of Michigan State because this is my home. There was uh, one recipient that when informed uh, of their induction into the Hall of Fame cried, and it was not Diane. <laughs> it was uh, a great gentleman who I've had an opportunity to know based on a number of visits out to California, somebody who cares about the green and white as much as anybody I've met in my entire life. He has people in the crowd here who support him. Um, an amazing, amazing individual. Number 26, from Cleveland, Ohio, all the way out from California, Clinton Jones. Yeah. <laughs> Hey Clyde, as you're fondly known by your teammates at Michigan State, I want to take this opportunity on behalf of your former backfield teammates at Michigan State to congratulate you in your induction into the prestigious Michigan State Hall of Fame. Our fabled two-time Big Ten and National Championship teams of 1965-1966 seasons will be forever standard that all present and future Spartan football teams will aspire to duplicate. Your induction along with other men and women athletes brings pride, respect, and admiration from all of us who wore the green and white. On behalf of Steve Jude, Jimmy Ray, Eddie Cotton, Dwight Lee, Reggie Kavanagh, Dick Berlinski, Frankie Waters, Mitch Pruitt, Charlie Wittemeyer, Bill Farrakko, and myself. Congratulations for an honor. Long awaited, but well deserved, my friend. Thanks for the memories, Clyde. Your buddy, Bob Apisa. I'll only take three minutes, but uh, I had a coach, Bud Grant, he said, when you get up to give a speech, stand tall so people can see you, speak loud so people can hear you, and sit down so people are like you. <laughs> No man is an island, and I certainly have not been. If it was not by the help and support of so many, I would not be in this position today. Sports creates value for one's life forever. And I had the fortune to be supported by not only my teammates, many who are here tonight, and my family, my mother who gave so much to me to enable me to be here. But I want to give to you what I've learned is that having a mentor is everything in life. Because having a mentor keeps you from being arrogant and enables you to see your eyebrows that you cannot see. I was mentored and I was able to accomplish great things only because of the people surrounded, surrounding me and the people that supported me. If you cherish your mentors, you follow your mentor's determination. You will achieve great things, not only in sports here at Michigan State, was given so much of my life, as you've seen by the testament of my teammates, but create great value in your lives. I congratulate all of you, and I wish you good health, happiness, and prosperity. Bubble, guys. You know that bubble coach used to talk about when you were in high school? Okay? 
that you can shut everything else out. You can shut everything else out and you can focus on what we have to do. This is the last chance for the Spartans to get ready for the Big Ten season that begins next week here against Ohio State. These MAC teams have players too, and this is an Eastern Michigan team that played 500 football last year and beat Central and beat Western Michigan. Hand off to Le'Veon running to his left. Le'Veon with a lot of room, he's at midfield. Le'Veon into Eastern territory and out of bounds on the near left sideline at the 41. Zim starts in motion right. They'll toss sweep it right to Le'Veon. Breaks one tackle, stiff arms his way away from another. He's inside the 30. Le'Veon is out of bounds at the 26 yard line. Tabor Pepper will snap it. Here is the snap and the put down and the boot. And he missed it to the right. Dan Conroy has missed from 39, and we are still scoreless at Spartan Stadium. As we take the first snap of the second quarter, scoreless ball game, the Spartans and Eastern Michigan. Andrew Maxwell back to throw, throws right side, caught by Benny Fowler. Benny at the 37 yard line. Andrew Playfakes winds up and throws left side. It's gonna be caught at the 40 yard line by Tony Lippett, hit down right there, but he has a first down. Mumphrey and Benny Fowler, wide side right, hand off to Le'Veon, big hole left tackle at the 30, spins at the 25, and falls forward to the 24 yard line. 36 yard try here from the left hash. It's down, it's up. It's good. The Spartans on the board for the first time with 10.06 to play in the first half. Shotgun snap to Andrew Maxwell. Quick throw left side. Benny Fowler has it hit. Fumbles. Looks like Eastern Michigan's on it. And the Eagles do have it at the 23-yard line of the Spartans. Play fakes. Winds up throws inside the five-yard line. A leaping grab made for an Eastern score by Donald Scott. Surprising halftime score here. Eastern Michigan seven, Michigan State three. The first half is in the history books. Jim Miller, you can bet your life that Mark D'Antonio had some words for his team at the half. They didn't win all these games and didn't reach all these lofty rankings and achieve so many goals by playing uninspired football, and I, I wouldn't expect they will in the second half. Yeah, I gotta believe that was some serious soul searching there, and, and Coach D'Antonio challenged his football team, tell him that is unacceptable of the standard of football that has been set here at Michigan State under his reign as head coach. So if they can't get jumpstart themselves, the coach will jumpstart them himself by getting after him a little bit. I guarantee he seriously and significantly challenged this football team, so much so as you know, pointing out individual players who needs to step up. If you don't continue to make plays, I'll get somebody else in there that makes plays. And that's how you start challenging guys if they're not going to challenge themselves. Deion Sims tight right. Andrew Maxwell under center. Steps back to throw. Fires over the middle. Falling down. Catch made by Deion Sims. Two tight ends and Le'Veon. Under center, Andrew Maxwell back to throw. Fires over the middle. deon has got it. Deion Sims at the 21 yard line of Eastern. Mike Sandler will hold. Here's the put down, the boots on the way. And he hits it. The Spartans take the lead. Another Dan Conroy field goal. He's hit from 36, 45, and now 35. Ben's in the shotgun. And he's being rushed and down he goes. The sack for Janikos Allen. The first of the day and just the third of the season. Right end, Deion Sims in motion. Play fake by Andrew Maxwell. Rolls to his right, throws that way. Caught up at the 28 yard line by Keith Mumphrey. Play fake by Andrew Maxwell. Throws left side, caught by Deion Sims. And he's finally rolled out of bounds. Third and one. And off to Larry. Running room to the 12, a six yard pickup. Andrew Maxwell to the shotgun. Le'Veon to his right. The snap, he'll wind up and throw it. Caught in the end zone by Deion Sims. Touchdown, MSU. Fourth and three for Eastern. Spartans lead 16 to seven. 
Fourth and ball game really for the Eagles. Throw right side is intended for Donald Scott and he may have caught the ball, but he's a yard short of a first down at the 37 yard line. Andrew Maxwell with a straight eye behind him. Play fakes to Le'Veon. Guns it left side to Deion Sims. Deion at the 30, the 25 and the 20 and is finally tripped up. Thomas in front of Le'Veon in the straight eye. Hand off to Le'Veon, up the gut. Touchdown, MSU! Tyler Benz at quarterback for Easter. Takes the shotgun snap. His pass in the left flat is batted down by Marcus Rudd. Third! Watch the third! They're in punt formation, and they will kick it away. Spartans played unsure punt, nobody deep. And the ball will roll inside the five-yard line. Spartans from the three. Le'Veon still in the ball game. Cuts outside 10, 15, 20. Far right sideline, 30, 35. He's at the 40 and finally pushed out of bounds. This is going to add to a monster day for Le'Veon Bell. Great block from Jack Allen on the play. They take a knee, and this one's in the record books now as time will officially run out. Tonight, great job in the second half, but we can't waste opportunities. We cannot waste opportunities, okay? Highest game's coming to town next week. Place going to be live, okay? We all win. We want to take a step in the Big Ten Conference. We've got to play flawless football. We've got to play flawless football, okay? So we go back to work tomorrow, 4 o'clock. Stay safe, great job in the second half. Great job on the sideline in the second half. I don't care what happens on the field sometimes. As long as you're live on the sidelines, we get you, okay? And we did that in the second half, so we'll work from there, all right? Take a good look at where we're at tomorrow, okay? Bring it out. Let's go. Let's go, let's go. Let's go fellas. Mark Pride on one. One, Mark Pride! 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 Mark P